The opening scene depicts the mountains on the Mongolian border, where strange things have been discovered over time. These discoveries include massive fossils of unknown creatures as well as thousand-year-old bodies with intact flesh. The scene then shifts to 1979, when a scientist, Professor Yang Silen, gathers a special team to investigate the Kunlun Mountains. He wants to find out more about those mysterious discoveries. We are then introduced to Hu Bai, one of the many soldiers who are hard at work in this excavation. Their job appears to be very difficult, as evidenced by the fact that they frequently collapse to the ground due to extreme exhaustion. Fortunately, the professor's daughter, Yang Ping, is a medic who helps those in need. According to Hu Bai's narration, he has a secret crush on Ping and feels as if he has known her for a long time. After days of hard work, the team discovers a massive skull, which astounds everyone. Moments later, the cave begins to shake, which eventually leads to a massive explosion that obliterates the entire camp. Sensing danger, the armed soldiers, led by Commander Han Zhiyang, take up positions outside the cave, ready for a fight. Professor Yang and a few surviving workers are the only ones who have survived. Because the explosion appears to have opened a passage inside the cave, Han inquires if anyone would like to investigate it with the professor. Most soldiers are hesitant to participate because there is a high risk of death. Ping, on the other hand, immediately volunteers to assist her father in this mission. This inspires Hu Bai to follow suit, and his best friend, Sang Sun, decides to join him. Finally, a group of soldiers is formed to carry out this mission. Following that, the team departs for their mission, passing through the demolished cave. They soon come across a massive chasm, which they proceed to climb down. They eventually arrive at an icy platform with a tunnel leading to a dark underground. They discover an unexplored cave filled to the brim with strange fossils after climbing it down. After some wandering, they come across an exit that leads to the other side of the mountain. Professor Young informs Hu Bai that legend has it that an ancient kingdom's gate, belonging to a top secret government, is located nearby. Their conversation is abruptly cut short when the other soldiers discover a startling discovery, a massive paw print in the snow. Following that, the team begins pursuing these paw prints, completely unaware that a massive beast is nearby. On the way, they come across a swarm of butterfly-like creatures fluttering around them. When they get a closer look, they realize these aren't butterflies, but rather strange-looking bats. Unaware of the danger they pose, one soldier captures it with his bare hands, resulting in an unexpected outcome, he is burned down by a blue flame, resulting in his death. Two more soldiers rush to his aid, only to die as well. Hundreds of these bats surround the team seconds later, prompting them to open fire. The commotion startles the nearby giant beast, causing it to flee. However, its unexpected movement causes an avalanche, posing a new challenge for the group. In a desperate attempt to survive, the soldiers flee, but several of them are killed. They are forced to stop at one point due to an abyss in front of them. With no other option, the soldiers team up with ropes before jumping into the water. As they fall, the rope that is tying Hu Bai and Ping together becomes stuck on a piece of ice, leaving the two hanging. Soon after, the rope snaps, sending them plummeting into the darkness below. Hu Bai regains consciousness and finds himself in Ping's arms in the following scene. He's baffled as to how he managed to survive such a fall. The number of survivors is now down to four, Hu Bai, Ping, Professor Yang, and Sang Sun. These survivors then gather as many supplies as they can before returning to their excavation. They eventually come across a large cave with a tall tower in the center. The professor recognizes this location as the Kunlun Sacred Palace. The tower is said to have nine levels where demons have been imprisoned. Professor Yang then kneels and lights a candle. The fire instantly ignites, causing a swarm of bats to encircle the tower. He then sends Hu Bai and Ping to the tower's entrance, ignoring Sang Sun's warning. When the couple walks in holding hands, an opening appears on the top, emitting a bright light. Soon after, the cave begins to fill up with spirits. Sang Sun immediately extinguishes the candle, halting the entire process, believing they have opened the gates of the devil. Unfortunately, the cave begins to collapse as a result, and the bats return to attack them. Sang Sun, sensing the impending danger, sacrifices himself to divert the bats' attention, allowing the remaining group members to flee. The three of them manage to find an exit, but it is on the ledge behind a waterfall. The bats catch up to them and attack while they are thinking about their next move. Hu Bai attempts to repel them with fire, but is struck from behind by a bat. When Ping notices the emerging flame, she quickly pushes him into the water before jumping off with her father. Hu Bai locates her underwater, but they are soon separated by a massive water creature that takes her away. In the aftermath, a heartbroken Hu Bai swims out and returns to the base. When he arrives, his wounds are treated, and Han informs him that he is the sole survivor. The commander goes on to say that they discovered all of their soldiers' bodies except Ping's and her father's. Hu Bai, devastated by the loss of his loved ones, decides to abandon everything and board a train to return home without informing anyone. Mr. Wang, his new employer, greets him at the station and assigns him a job as a librarian. He begins working there and lives a peaceful life from then on. Hu Bai unexpectedly reunites with his childhood friend, Kai Xian, who works as an entertainer, one day during a lunch outing at a local bar. The next day at work, he comes across a book written by Professor Yang. 
When he goes through it, he discovers several contents of the same demon tower, which leads him to believe that the professor was aware of it from the start. As he connects the dots, he realizes that only he and Ping can activate the demon tower, which explains why Professor Yang sent them in earlier. Meanwhile, Commander Han and his team come across a coffin containing a living woman who looks like Ping. Shirley is her given name. The officers are forced to confine this woman in a closely monitored room because she possesses an uncontrollable mysterious power. Han's team locates Professor Yang and transports him to their headquarters three years later. Simultaneously, the enigmatic giant beasts attack Oil City in West China, causing widespread devastation. When Professor Yang learns of this, he hypothesizes that the activation of the tower has opened portals in space and time, allowing demonic creatures to infiltrate Earth. The professor sneaks out of the military headquarters in order to gain deeper insights. The appearance of these demons appears to have an impact on Hubai as well, as the scar on his back becomes inconvenient. His back suddenly ignites with blue flames one day while reading in the library, and he begins to exhibit inexplicable powers. He can now make furniture and his friend float in the air. Mr. Wang appears shortly after, and despite witnessing the ongoing commotion, he appears very calm. He quickly regains control of the situation and restores normalcy. Mr. Wang explains that Hu Bai's blood has been contaminated by a demonic force as a result of the earlier bad attack. According to him, Hu Bai now possesses immense power, but using it can lead him to hell. Hu Bai wonders how he knows all of this, so he uses his psychic abilities to transform the library into an old tomb. He finally reveals himself to be Prince Yi of the Solin Nation's protector. He continues by explaining that Prince Yi was Hu Bai's predecessor, and he was the one who led humanity against the demon race that had taken over Earth. Prince Yi sealed the tower with his own body, trapping most demons inside, but some of them assumed human forms. These demons are now on the hunt for Hu Bai, who is the only one who can open the tower. Shirley appears to have recovered her memories and, surprisingly, expresses her desire to meet Hu Bai at the military headquarters. Han follows him and pays him a visit at the library as a result. The latter initially refuses to rejoin the military, but changes his mind after learning about the woman who resembles Ping. Following that, Hu Bai and Kai Xian accompany the commander. Han takes them to northern China and introduces them to the team that will be on a mission to find the professor. Ching Dong, a young woman, Wei Wei, Shirley, and other soldiers make up the group. When Hu Bai first sees Shirley, he addresses her as Ping, but she refers to herself as Shirley. Before embarking on their mission, the group prepares weapons and supplies. They make their way through the desert on camels. A sandstorm strikes them at one point on their journey, forcing them to flee for their lives. As a result, Kai Xian and three other members of the group are separated. Hu Bai's group arrives at the ruins of Oil City after days of non-stop travel, while Kai Xuan's group is still in the middle of the desert. When they are ambushed by demonic creatures, Kai Xuan's group splits even more in a desperate attempt to save themselves. Despite their efforts, the monsters take two lives, while Kai Xian and another man make it to Oil City and rejoin the main group. Hu Bai suggests leaving after hearing about their encounter with the monsters in order to avoid a massacre like the one that occurred earlier in the cave. Cheng and Shirley, on the other hand, decide to stay and complete their mission. Their conversation is cut short by the approaching sounds of monsters. As a result, they arm themselves and prepare to engage in combat. They quickly dispatch the first beast before pursuing the second. However, when they turn around, the first one has already vanished. During their struggle, Shirley flees to an abandoned school, and Hu Bai follows her. When he enters, he finds a slew of dead bodies hanging from the ceiling. He then finds a tunnel that leads to the prince's tomb. Soon after, he is attacked and knocked unconscious by a creature. The creature charges at him, but Shirley intervenes, causing it to flee. In an unexpected twist, she uses her abilities to place Hu Bai's body inside the coffin. Meanwhile, more demonic monsters appear on the scene, so the group takes cover in the building's upper floors and fights back with silver bullets and rocket launchers. Bullets are rendered ineffective against the demons, demonstrating their formidable strength. Wei Wei, on the other hand, poses as one of the mannequins and tries hard not to move in order to avoid being caught. She dashes towards Kai Xian and the two hide inside a bus as soon as the creature moves away. Regardless, the creature tracks them down and begins attacking the vehicle. Hu Bai regains consciousness after some time and begins screaming for help. While he's at it, his arm wound heals quickly, leaving him perplexed. He is then teleported into the same cave containing the demonic tower. There, he witnesses a creature dropping Ping's body into a flame that eventually gets possessed by the demon queen. After the creature departs, Hu Bai approaches her, demanding Ping's return. However, the queen refuses to give up on Ping's body because she holds the power to open the tower. 
She instead proposes that he accompany her to the tower and unlock the long waiting door. Our hero thinks for a while but politely turns her down. He insists on being sent back to Oil Town, asserting that he'll find some other way. The Demon Queen finds this amusing but decides to grant him a chance, teleporting him back. By this time, Shirley gains control over all the monstrous creatures and directs them to take down the group members. The moment he returns, Hubai notices the creature attacking the bus with Kai Xian and Wei Wei, so he quickly takes it down with a rocket launcher. When the other creatures see this, they charge at him, but Shirley saves him because he is the key to opening the tower door. She then cradles him in her arms and assures him of his safety. Hu Bai, realizing that Ping will never return, retrieves a pistol and shoots her three times. As a result, all of the creatures vanish and the demonic tower crumbles. She admits in her final breath that he is the only one who can kill her. She then kisses him unexpectedly before collapsing to the ground. Shirley is transformed into Ping moments later, and she expresses her joy at seeing him for the last time. Hai Bai, on the other hand, is not ready to let go of her. He carries her to the prince's coffin in the hope that it will heal her. He lays down beside her and gently touches her forehead with his own, eliciting a flood of childhood memories. Ping possessed an innate supernatural ability, the ability to resurrect deceased beings. This explains how Hubai managed to survive after falling into the deep and dark abyss earlier. However, for some reason, Ping's mother forbade her from using these abilities. Her mother died one day after being burned in a blue fire, revealing that she was a descendant of demons who took human form. Before the vision ends, Ping expresses her undying love for Hubai and asks him to locate her father. With this, she dies, leaving Hubai heartbroken. He regains his composure after a period of remorse and decides to honor her final wish. Hubai sets on the mission with the other team members to find her father at the end of the movie. Subscribe for more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.